Our first story comes from Walthamstow in London, and we're delighted to be joined by Alex Lee from the Gleaners Cafe, who describe themselves as being a pay-what-you-feel community cafe in Walthamstow, London, a workers' cooperative supported by local volunteers, which is run on surplus, choosing solidarity over charity. Alex, over to you. Your five minutes start now. Hey, nearly forgot the unmute. Um, hi everyone, really nice to be here. Um, yeah, as Rob said, um, I'm going to be talking you, to you about our, our little cafe in, in Walthamstow. Um, so just to give you a little bit of background, we've been we've been going for three years. Um, we're a work, workers cooperative, started as a pair, uh, and now we're, we've come to five. Um, I'll talk through a bit about how the pandemic kind of changed things, but first I just want to mention a little bit about our vision overall. So as Rob said, we, we pay what you feel, which means there's different prices for different people, depending on what's affordable. Um, as we all know, affordable means something different to everyone, depending on circumstances, situation. These things change all the time. And um, so, yeah, so we pay what you feel. Uh, and we also run on a mixture of surplus and organic produce. And I'll, I'll come back to a little bit of that in a minute. Um, and we're a workers cooperative, too. So we're trying to make, uh, you know, livelihoods from from this project um but at the core what we're trying to do really is just create a beautiful positive social space where people can eat together talk together be together uh across all kinds of different boundaries and and that it should be a healing space for for our bellies for each other for our communities and to start to realize that that is all the same thing you know our bellies our soils our ecosystems each other our communities it's all the same system that needs to be nurtured and loved and cared for together so so that's kind of the the philosophy that's at the core of the cafe and we believe that meaningful livelihoods can and should emerge from that kind of that kind of project across all kinds of different things, not just not just food. But anyway, that's what we provide at the cafe. We open three days a week. Um, and as I said, we run on a mixture of surplus and an organic produce. So the idea initially was to run on surplus to reduce waste, you know, to reduce the huge amounts of food going to landfill. But at the same time, um, it also keeps costs down. You know, we get this surplus food given to us. We get hold of it through different local you know, it, sometimes it's surplus from local shops, sometimes it's from farms, sometimes it's through these different surplus charities who work with, with supermarkets and bigger wholesalers. Sometimes we work direct with wholesalers. Um, sometimes it's best, things past their best before dates, which, which means very little, you know, the food's still perfectly good. Um, so it varies in scale from, from the local to further afield. And it also varies from the sort of small scale to the big scale, you know, multinational, you know, working with Tesco's and things like this, um, or, or even bigger. Um, yeah, so that helps us to keep our costs down, which allows us to, to run as pay what you feel. But as I said before, it's not just about that, you know, we want to work with the waste, we want to work with that surplus and rethink ideas of waste, but we also don't want to just be relying on that waste and feeding into that system too much. So we use our purchasing power where we have it to to buy organic so we buy in we, we use the surplus to inspire us in what we cook so usually that's our fresh produce we cook with that and and help that to inspire us on what to make and then we we buy in things you know dry goods spices all this kind of thing and support regenerative agriculture with the money that we get there um i'll move on from that and talk about some other bits i realize i'm running out of time already um but yeah, so over the past couple of years, we've worked with with over 100 volunteers. We have volunteers come in to work with us every single day we're open. Um, they cook with us, they serve with us, they they gain skills, but we gain skills from them too. It's, it's an exchange always, and it's a wonderful partnership that's been going from the start. We have volunteers with us sort of from, from all over the world, um, from every continent on the world, I think, except for Antarctica. Um, and that's been an incredible source of inspiration for us all, you know, and learning about food, about culture, about each other um, and sharing. And Alex, you've got one minute left. Lovely. Thanks, Rob. And so I just wanted to say that, that all of this exists within a community centre called the Hornbeam Centre. And they're our kind of main collaborators and they 
sort of fostered us through this process and supported us to, to build the cafe in this way. And it kind of emerged out of some initial um, projects that were happening there, some community lunches, some food waste projects, all this kind of different stuff sort of amalgamated into this vision for, for a cafe that could be run on, on its own, you know, financially independent. And so I just want to quickly mention about the, um, the pay what you feel, food, um, pay what you feel uh, pricing system. So people they pay different amounts based on what they can afford. So initially it was that anyone could pay anything and that worked really well initially, but then the pandemic happened and we ended up doing a, an emergency response with free food. And our, our kind of vision and our model got a bit confused and people got lost and we were promoted as a free food service everywhere. And we tried to rebuild back as a financially sustainable local cafe. So now just to tell you very quickly, we have a little system where we have four different prices for everything based on a, a star, a circle, a square or a triangle. People choose their, their shape and pay according to that shape. And what's so beautiful is that every day we get a pretty even distribution of all of those things. So it's not... Some people say to us, is it an alternative to a food bank? Uh, no, it's not. It's a, it's a shared space for all to be in, no matter who they are, where they're from, and everybody's equally valued. And it's not, it's not about the money, but we have to think about that financial structure in order to facilitate that process of, of inclusivity. So I just wanted to share a little bit about that quickly. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.